I first announced this project back in my video about Sarah Perry that was published in August 2019. It's hard to believe that it's that long ago, but back then this book was just a germ of an idea. I actually hadn't written or drawn a thing yet, which makes me feel a little better because I know this project took me longer than I wanted it to. I can't remember exactly when I started working on it, but I spent several months just writing and brainstorming. I also did a lot of research into coloring books. I'm not positive where the idea for an ABC alphabet format came from, but I believe it was when I discovered a coloring book from the 1950s called The Star Coloring Book of Safety First. It's pretty hilarious. I like this format because, in a way, the book would write itself. I just have to find a word for every letter of the alphabet. The writing went through many iterations and concepts. At first I was going to make biographical pages for famous antinatalists through history, but then I abandoned that idea because I wanted the book to be about ideas rather than individuals. A leftover from that concept are quotes I put under some pages if an antinatalist author's last name lined up with the subject I was talking about. Once it started to come together, I got really excited because I thought that this format could be a good way to explain this philosophy to someone who is completely unfamiliar with it. And 26 letters equaling 26 drawings would be a sufficient amount of pages to do so. So why a coloring book? The simplest answer is because I like them and collect them. I wanted an antinatalist coloring book for myself, but one didn't exist yet, so I just had to make one. Unlike my comic books, the coloring books I had as a child got thrown out. I don't know why I never kept them, I just didn't see them as collectibles the way comic books are. But now I buy them just to enjoy the line art and relive my childhood memories. They're cheap entertainment too. Boutique coloring books on Amazon usually don't cost more than 10 to $15. And mainstream mass produced coloring books like you find at the pharmacy or the grocery store cost usually around 3 bucks or so. It's not a huge increase from the 75 cents or a dollar they cost when I was young. I did miss the height of the coloring book trend though, which peaked in 2015. In the six years since then, that market has really shrunk. That was a new renaissance for coloring books, and it coincided with the rise of self-publishing on Amazon. Many of the new antinatalist books that are coming out are also self-published through Amazon, like the Antinatalist Magazine, Procreation is Murder, and The History of Antinatalism. I like the idea of a coloring book because it's interactive. This book is unfinished on purpose. I made sure not to add large areas of black or overly dramatic shadows or shading to these images because that's for you, the reader and colorist, to fill in. You get to decide what time of day it is, what the sky looks like, and what color clothing these characters are wearing. The rise of the adult coloring book movement went hand in hand with the rise of a mental health movement called mindfulness. Some of you who are hobbyists, or artists, or even people who work on anything, like fixing a car, or making a meal, or gardening, find that the world kind of drops away when you get into these activities. You reach a state of mental focus, free from outside stimuli, and it can be extremely refreshing and reinvigorating. Especially for someone like me who has an anxiety disorder. When I get lost in a drawing, time just flies by, and when I'm done, I not only feel refreshed, but I have this piece of art to show for it. As Schopenhauer said, life is something not to be enjoyed, but to be overcome, to be gotten over with. And an activity like drawing or coloring just helps pass the time without so much anxiety, because most of the time I'm a nervous wreck. As Sylvia Plath said, you can never really enjoy the present moment because regret over the past or fear of the future ruins it. So I find it helpful to engage in activities that help keep me focused on the present moment, like art. So if this book can provide even a little bit of mental health to people, that would really mean a lot to me. And while people are coloring these pages, they are more than likely going to contemplate the messages in each image. This is not the first philosophy coloring book. There are a few out there, but none that I felt earned my money. One that came up is the existential coloring book. Existentialism is not really a philosophy, but more of an art movement from the early 20th century. I mention it in my book because it was a nihilistic position popularized by Albert Camus' Myth of Sisyphus uh, metaphor, but this coloring book is just so cheap to me. Like he clearly just traced from photographs and then added in animal heads for no reason. I mean this page is mostly blank and he just asked the colorist to also be the artist and fill it in. As far as activism goes, there are a few vegan coloring books. Basically anything that's a trend will have a coloring book. This one is just vegan phrases. 
This other one was the best that I discovered, but the art, it wasn't really for me, and this panel meant that they don't understand what nature really is. The artist isn't showing the cruel side of this game, like how this owl is going to rip apart this rabbit limb by limb while it's still alive. I don't owe nature any respect whatsoever. I did find two animal rescue coloring books, and both are pretty good. Sad, though. My favorite coloring book has to be the one made for the movie adaptation of Frank Herbert's Dune, because it's just hard to believe that they tried to aim the story at kids. It's one of my all-time favorite novels, so I just get a lot of enjoyment of seeing it in coloring book form. People tend to discover this book and the movie at college age, so it's really not for kids. I was heavily influenced by a coloring book writer and artist named Peter F. Copeland to make this more than a coloring book, but also an educational book. Copeland was a prolific historian and artist. He wrote a series of history books called Discovering America from 1974 to 1989. He had been an illustrator since the 1950s and was drawing projects up to two weeks before he died in 2007. He did most of his coloring book work in the 90s. Sadly, he was married four times and had many children and grandchildren, but sometimes you have to separate the artist from the art to appreciate them. The format of his coloring books was to have a detailed illustration with a paragraph of text at the bottom embellishing the page's subject. He also wrote and illustrated what has to be the most depressing coloring book I own, the Titanic coloring book. I wonder if some people will consider my book to be the saddest coloring book. It was Copeland who also made me decide to do more detailed drawings for this. I originally planned on doing very simple drawings, and I thought that that would help get the project done more quickly. If you look at coloring books from my childhood, the illustrations are very rudimentary. You might even say they were crude, with very little detail. Although knowing what I know now, having worked in the commercial art industry for 20 years, these guys were probably given a week to draw this entire book, maybe less. Clearly, coloring books in the 70s and 80s didn't pay very well because these drawings were far behind the artwork that was being produced in comics at the time. It wasn't really until recent times, when adult coloring books were selling well, that Marvel and DC decided to repurpose their art libraries uh, to make coloring books. These are my favorite coloring books to collect now because they're large format reproductions of some of the best comic book art ever drawn, without the distraction of color, so I can really enjoy and study the line work. Although I don't know what Marvel was thinking with this one. I mean, this guy wears head to toe black and he lives in a gray house. <laughs> How the hell are you supposed to color this? Coloring books actually have a long history of being involved in counterculture. What is considered to be the first adult coloring book was the Executive Coloring Book from 1961. It was made by some Chicago ad executives and parodied the advertising industry and corporate culture. It ended up becoming a New York Times bestseller. So because of that, more followed like the JFK coloring book and the aptly named Cunt coloring book that featured images of, uh, I'm sure you can guess based on the title. The coloring book itself originated in 1879 with the publication of The Little Folks Painting Book. As the title suggests, early coloring books were meant to be painted rather than colored with crayons. Unfortunately, Amazon has very limited paper options. I would have liked to have had these pages printed on cardstock rather than plain white paper because I want people to be able to use any medium they want. So I wouldn't recommend coloring these with watercolor paints unless maybe you cut out the page and paste it to some board. But that is why I decided to offer a digital version of the book so you can print out the pages on any type of paper you want. Also, I'm a digital colorist and I know that many other people are as well, so a digital version will make it easier for you to do that and you won't need a scanner. I would recommend putting a piece of blank typing paper underneath the page when coloring, just in case your medium bleeds or dents the page below it. I would recommend crayons or colored pencils, but some people prefer markers or gel pens. Crayons and pencils both use basically the same wax or oil uh, with pigment, but colored pencils just let you color in a little more detail in smaller areas. But you don't actually have to even use color to enjoy this book. You can just use a regular graphite pencil and create grayscale renderings. A lot of coloring books these days have the grayscale already in so that a colorist only needs to add solid areas of color and they don't have to bother with shape, form, and shadows. 
I tried to be inclusive to as many antinatalists as I could, so I don't get too much into the weeds about the different normative theories like negative utilitarianism or Kantianism. But the book is very much atheist, deterministic, and is heavily influenced by David Benatar and In Mendem. I thought it was important to show the science that underlies this philosophy like cause and effect, genetics, and evolution. I tried to eliminate redundancies in my pages. The closest I probably came was with quackery and theism, because I used the Catholic Church and the Church of Scientology as examples in both. However, Q is for quackery is really about lying, and T is for theism is about delusion and tradition. Obviously, Q and X were the hardest ones to come up with something, whereas a common letter like P had so many possibilities like pro-life, philosophy, predation, parasitism, Planned Parenthood, prevention, and the one I eventually went with, which was Pollyanna Principle. So that meant that the letter O could be used for something other than optimism bias, because Pollyannaism and optimism bias are basically the same thing. I hope that you all enjoyed the book, and it would probably be most useful as a gift for someone of childbearing age who hasn't had kids yet. It is now available on Amazon, where it's cheapest, because they take care of the printing and usually offer free shipping. You can't beat that. But for a more personalized touch, you can also get the book over at my Etsy page, where I'll sign it for you and include a box of crayons. I want to do something more than just create videos for YouTube, although I will be doing videos here to promote the book, and this project was a way for me to expand my activism. You can't hand a YouTube video to someone or put it on your bookshelf or collect it, so I hope that this will make an interesting and unique addition to your philosophy collection. It was a lot of fun to make, stressful at times, but I think I've grown as an artist working on it. I drew the pictures mostly at night and on weekends over the past year. Thank you for watching and checking out my book. If you'd like to help promote this coloring book, a review on YouTube, Amazon, or Etsy would be very helpful and appreciated. Also, I am on Instagram, so please feel free to share the pages you have colored with me. I would really love to see them. So I'm on Instagram, Tumblr, or you can email me, uh, or you can just share a link in the comment section of my videos. You can also tag Life Sucks uh, on the ANI or other antinatalist Discord forums. I don't currently have a Facebook account, but if you post them on Facebook, just send me an email and I'll check it out. Thank you, antinatalist community. This book would not exist without all of you. More to come soon.